God bless football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Mike Golick. God bless football and all the close to newly minted millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big week, draft week. It is uh, two days away. Mike, what are you doing draft night? I, I hear, you know, Billy and I would like to do something with you, but I hear you have a big show uh, on DraftKings, doing it for DraftKings, I believe with your son. So why don't you tell the audience, and me and Billy, what indeed you are doing on, uh, on draft night. You're making money, I know that, that's for well, sure. I mean, listen, I mean, we, we, we all know that game, right? We know how to keep score there. Not uh, all yes, of us. Uh, no, well, <laughs> Um, draft night, me, my, my son, Mike and Charlotte Wilder are going to be doing a draft show. We'll be one of the places. I think there's three or four different ones between Vissen and DraftKings of we're going to be live during the first round of the draft. So we'll be in their studios there. Um, the day before Wednesday or Wednesday, we'll be doing a mock draft show as well. So we're, we're going to go there and do a lot of different shows, including, like I said, the live first round on Thursday. So I'm excited. We're not at the actual draft in Kansas City, um, but, you know, like, like I've been for years. But this, is a, this will be very cool. I'm, I'm excited for it. I forgot the amount of work involved in doing a mock draft or covering a draft with the players you cover. Now, when I was doing it at ESPN, I was also calling college football. So it was, you know, I was doing my homework basically every week when I was calling games, kind of like Mike is doing now. Uh, so it was a little more reacquaintance with some of the college guys, even though uh, I had called college a couple of years ago. So I still know some of these guys. But it's, uh, it's fun to go through because the most fun thing I like doing is looking at tape. So I get to do a lot of that. So you were saying just like calling the games would help out with your your knowledge of being able to see the players up close and well pre preparing for a game I watch a ton of tape talk to the players and when you're doing you know 13 games and bowl games you're bound to run across some of the players that are going to go you know higher in the draft or in the draft so uh, you get to have seen those players and what they can do so normally when I was at ESPN when it got around draft time this is back. This is back. These kids today, Stu, have it so easy. You can just call up video. I had to go into the video library at ESPN and actually rent, not rent, what am I saying, rent, get, like you'd get a book in a library, you'd get a uh, tape. Check it out. Players. Yeah, you yeah. have to check it out. Exactly right. So that's what I would do. And I'd go to my, my cubicle and I'd put, get a machine and put it in there and I would just sit there. <laughs> I would do the, the morning show with Greeny in the morning. Then when I watch tape for hours until I did NFL Tonight, which is now NFL Live later in the afternoon. So it was, uh, it was a full day there for sure. When's the last time, and you won't remember the exact last time, so maybe it's not a great question. When was like the breaking point between I have to go and check these out myself to, hey, let's send little Timmy, who's like, you know, an AP or whatever, to go kind of crunch some of this tape for me. And Seems like me a job for Hembo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never did that because I loved watching tape. Hmm. I mean, I, I loved watching tape. When I was calling games, this is when uh, I would have to go, I call a Saturday night game, so I'd have to get there Friday I'd have to actually leave Thursday night to get there Friday to do the morning show, and then I'd be there all day Friday, and I would get the tape of both teams, of whatever team I was at. I would get their cut-ups, and I would just sit in their film room and watch tape for, for hours. And when I was doing the show, the, the, the games with Bill Curry, it was me, Bill Curry, Dave Barnett, Michelle Tafoya, way back when, and every, everybody would come in there with Bill and I and watch, including the producer, the director, other people. We'd have about 10 or 15 people in there watching tape. They would leave within a half hour of Bill and I watching tape because in a half hour, we probably watched three plays. But we keep going back and forth, breaking it down, watching the feet, watching the hands, walking, what are they seeing? That, that the people in there with us were like, my God, will you just run the play? You know, we're like, no, 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 we're looking at this is what we're looking at here. So it always ended up Bill and I alone in there for a few hours. So for your DraftKings show that you have on draft night, where do you stop watching? Like, is it just a first round thing? Do you watch like the first 10 picks? Like how many people are you actually watching for the draft? So that's a great question, Billy. Now, it used to be when I was covering the draft, I would be on green and I would do radio the first day and then I would be on TV the last two days. So it would be all of them. Now, for this particular show, we're only doing Thursday in the first round. So that certainly cuts down uh, on the work. But I'll be doing shows 
Friday, you know, to talk about some of the other guys taken. But for your question and from your standpoint, it, it's basically just going to be the first round. So Mel Kuyper told us when he was on last week uh, that he like one of his his most famous omissions was Austin Eckler. Like he just didn't watch tape right. for anyone. So who is someone, I guess, that you haven't watched tape for? And who is someone that in the years of doing you remember just faking it? Oh, God, there's more than a few players I just faked it on. No, no doubt about it. You would know a little, very little about them. But what I've learned over the years is to take a sentence and expand it to a paragraph. Ah, you know, excellent. Uh, yes. And just, and, and just, you know, of just constant bullshit. But I said. Plus, you have to have some draft terms like locked in, like he's got a motor, like, oh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Just like Van, or, or uh, I should say, um, Oh my God, Jay Billis and, and re arm length or whatever, yeah, reach or whatever it is, and, right? Um, but yeah, I, I would do that occasionally, Bill. Yeah, and then there were some, like in that third day, when they would get drafted, man, I would be, I would actually have to go through Mel's book, what that I had on set to see who the hell they were. Now, once I saw them and read about them, I could talk for days about them, of course, because of, of the football terms and stuff. But no doubt that now that was back in the day, though, when I was doing college every year. So I did kind of know them all. But there's absolutely no doubt there were some names I'd be like, who the hell is that? You know, and would have to look it up as Mel was just kind of rattling stuff off about them. <laughs> Mike, to that end, one of the first times I realized how full of shit some of you guys were was I was working the draft with Mark Schlereff and an offensive Stink. lineman got taken and they turned to Mark. It was like day three. We were wrapping up. And for some reason, the host turned to Mark and said, so what do you think about this guy? And Mark was literally watching the highlights that they put up on the screen at Radio City and said, oh, I'll tell you, he had great pass set when he played the purple team, uh, whoever that was, <laughs> and all that. <laughs> and it was, it was one of those where I was just like, people are listening to you thinking, my God, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I'm watching you make it up. Uh, as, as we're going here. Listen, you can talk. That can be said about any analyst anywhere. There is, listen, there is nobody that is perfect at their job. So there are times, as I say, bullshit with conviction. You know, act like you know what you're talking about. And I've done it. And everybody has done it. Anybody that says they haven't done it is full of shit. Because you don't know everything. It's the first thing I ever said when I started doing radio. Even about football, let alone having to cover the other sports. I don't know everything. So I will either say I don't know it or I will try and bullshit my way through it and, and hope to not be factually wrong. <laughs> Nowadays, you can get fact-checked pretty easily, though, and get yourself into trouble. So let's say Thursday comes. You're doing yeah. your draft show, right? And there's a big surprise. And all of a sudden, with the 28th pick, Scrooge McDuck has taken an offensive Break line. And down. you've done no prep for Scrooge. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that's where, well, I, I kind of have notes on guys, enough players through like actually three rounds just in mm. case something like that happens. But to your point, um, that's when you either have to, you, you have to decide instantaneously, do I have a couple of sentences about him in the research that I've done to where I can just bullshit off that? Or, or do I just have to say, and I said it before. Hey, not going to lie, don't know much about that guy. I don't like that I, option. I, I really do. so, yeah, that's a terrible don't option. Do that you can't one. say that, don't Mike. Do that. That I, you know, don't do that. I, I don't want to do it, but I can basically within a second of which way do I have to go, I, I'll know if I have enough to bullshit my way through it. And the, the issue there is just know when to stop talking. Mm. Because right. when you're bullshitting. Less you're is more. Exactly right. Yes. When you're bullshitting, you'll just start to ramble. Right. You just got to say something succinct and stop. Yep, and with conviction. You're advice. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just remember, I, pass I, I, versus the purple team. Just yeah, remember. Yeah. <laughs> that, nope. I mean, that's funny. But I love that Mike had Mel's book and Mel had a Snickers bar and a Sprite. Like, that's it. <laughs> exactly right. Listen, Mel's book, that's the first thing we got handed out was his book. Now, again, I knew I'd say 80% of the players because I was calling college games. And when you're watching, like, to get ready for, say, Ohio State, you watch their last few games, so you're seeing a bunch of other teams and players as well. So that kind of sticks out. But there's no doubt, at least when this is back when I was full bore into college, 
there was still 20% of the guys that I had no idea who they were. <laughs> this Mel Piper has such a great gig. He writes a book. He sells we are, all the We ESPN. are so in Billy's wheelhouse sells right now. All, I'm assuming he sells all of these copies of the book to ESPN, so he makes a killing. And then everyone on the panel just has his information and what he has decided is the case. So no matter what, if he's wrong, everyone will be wrong, and it exactly will right. not be his fault. No, it's exactly right. Now, oh, my God. Again, I was, I was in a position because I called college football for the first couple of rounds to know all the guys and have my own. That's why I watch tape, more tape. So I would have my own view on them. But no doubt, Mel's book. I mean, Mel's book was like the cheat book, man. I mean, it was, it was where you go, uh, you know, when you go to break, in all honesty, on that third day. And that's when picks are coming every five minutes. And a lot of times you don't talk about every single pick. During the break or when I wasn't on camera, I'd look at a couple of the guys that got picked. I'd pick up, like I said, a sentence or two, jot down a couple things, and then, man, I could go. So that's kind of how I did it with guys that I didn't know. So I usually didn't get caught flat-footed. Does Mel charge the analyst at ESPN for his book? How does this work with Mel? No, he doesn't, but he should because he we should, all yeah. use it. We yeah. all, especially later on. Like I said, the early stuff, we all know the players. You know, we all kind of look at the players. But for the whole thing, through, and just think what Mel has spawned, all the different people that are doing it now, right. and selling their own books and doing their own thing, all started because of Mel. It's just an incredible thing. I feel like he probably inventories the company. You know what I mean? Like he sends an inventory out. He's like, hey, like I, I provided you six books. Like this is what it's going to cost. I have an idea for you, Mike. So let's say, and obviously I'm new at this. Let's say maybe not the first round, but in the later rounds, if you guys were to cover the later rounds, you don't know what's going to happen. Instead of saying, I don't know what's going on. Just kind of toss it to since it's such a short window. Hey, I think the next pick is in. Just keep saying that. Hey, I think I, think I just heard the next pick is in. You know what I mean? And then just they'll be scrambling to see if the pick so is in or not. And you bought yourself probably two minutes there. To do something. So if they go to the next pick and it's not in, then I do have time to research. And that's the one thing that has definitely changed over the years is from having nothing but paper on the desk to having an iPad or a computer on the desk to where if you didn't have it in your research, you could find it pretty quickly. So, yeah, there, there is you get a lot of guys who sound like they know what they're talking about, and a lot of them do. But make no mistake, everyone at some point does the with conviction. Or you can go the mail route and have nothing on the desk and just, just go. Yeah, I mean, it yep. is. Genius. It amazes me to this day. Amazes me to this day uh, that he's also not 400 pounds eating pumpkin pie every day. It's unbelievable. I am fascinated by this video room, though, at ESPN. Uh, and by the way, the draft is coming up in two days. Bryce Young is going to join us <laughs> in a couple of minutes. And we're very excited for that. The uh, quarterback out of Alabama, potentially the number one pick of the draft. This video room at ESPN, like how long can you check out these videos? Like how, how does it work? You know, well, you keep them as long as you want. I mean, you know. Right. I, well, what if Mel needs them or someone? I mean, Mel, Mel's got his own. Mel's got his own way of getting them. Mel was rare. Right. Mel was rarely at ESPN. He did all this from his house in Baltimore. Okay. So yeah, and, and it wasn't far from where my desk was for probably fourteen of the twenty-three years there. Uh, I was literally right down the hall in the basement from the uh, from the video library. So I would just go in there and get a ton of them and just and just hang on to them. It's not not like anybody else was using them, you know. Uh, unless other people were looking for highlights for the draft, they would I, they would come in and try and get it from me. But for the most part, I could take whatever I wanted. But do you return them? Because much like these presidents who are bringing classified documents home, they're sitting around the office. If we if we snooped around the Golic household, would we find ESPN draft videos no, on certain no, players? No, no, I never took them home because Stu, you're probably you're the only one that knows the machines. These were the big VHSers, not the oh big really? Ones. Okay, the big ones. So I had to get a machine to my cubicle that could play this. Well, oh. nowadays they just pull shit up on the iPad and can watch whoever they want. Type in player and you're going to get whatever you want. Yep. If you had that tape, I had to get the machine, so I didn't have it at home. So I had to do everything at work, and it worked out well. Like I said, after the morning show, that ended at 10, and I didn't go on to, on NFL Live or NFL Tonight as it was then until like 4. So I had a lot of time on the days when I was doing both to just sit there and watch. But those were such bulky tapes, you couldn't leave them lying around or you'd have no room. So, You're right. Like I said, with proximity, I was right there. So I just went back and forth a lot. 
Billy, I don't like this modern day draft stuff. I got to be honest with you. No. Just pull it up on the internet. I think you need a good VHS tape. Like you do. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you got to struggle. You got to work for it. Uh, you're right, Mike. These kids don't have to work anymore. It's all right there on the internet. Yeah, it's all right there at their fingertips now. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little too easy. But, you know, that's that's where we are right now, Stu. We just have to deal with it. It's what our yeah. kids get to live with now. Yeah, you're right. Uh, right. We hope that they live in a better world than we exactly. grew up in. Exactly. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, they're not. Um, <laughs> it, Mike, you mentioned before, uh, and I don't know if it was before we went on air or not, that the draft is coming up. It's exciting because it's going to be instant millionaires. But with NIL, a lot of these guys are already there. I wonder if that takes away um, this year some of that excitement, right? Because you have some players in other sports who have made the decision to not go pro because they'll make more money remaining in college. Well, uh, Billy, one of the the guy we're about to speak to, Bryce Young, has the largest NIL deal of any athlete in college sports right now. So, But it's an obvious decision for him, but others will have to make that decision. Well, again, largest NIL deal compared to possible number one pick in the draft, there's no comparison. Right. I mean, he's going to be guaranteed $35 million. He's not making $35 million in NIL. But you look. At- but Mike, I have heard stories of guys who don't want to go to the draft because they're making more money in college than they would be in a third round pick in the NFL well, draft. Well, I wouldn't go if I was projecting the third round anyway. I would right. go back to try and up my pick. You know, th- there's there's more money obviously in the second and first round. So I don't know if it's much as because I'm making money and I'd be a third rounder as I can improve my draft position to the second or maybe first round. But there are actually people I believe. Um, like in, in women's college basketball. I mean, they're, they're, some of them are making more money than you'd make in the WNBA. So, I mean, that, that's, that, that's incredible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and kudos to them. I'm glad they're, they're, uh, that they're able to make that money. But for football, you're going in that, you know, top 10, even, even really the first round. NIL deals aren't really comparing with that. No. Uh, Mike, I mentioned Bryce Young, and he is, he is going to join us here in a few minutes, and we're excited for that. Uh, what do you make of Bryce Young? Should he be the number one overall pick? Is is Stroud better, in your opinion? What do you think? I love Bryce Young. I love Stroud and Bryce Young. I have them one and one A, and then I have you know Richardson and Levis after that. Um, if, if I were the one picking, I would pick C.J. Stroud. And that's not because I don't like Bryce Young. If I end up with Bryce Young, I'm ecstatic with that. I think he is an. Inc- I think they're both incredible football players. Um, but I, I would go with, with C.J. Stroud. It, it, it is is it the height so much as the weight? I mean, he's a it, Bryce Young is the smallest dude. Now he's always been that, right? I mean, he's played in about as big time college football as you can at that size, and he flourished. Now, we all know the thing about the NFL is guys are bigger, faster, stronger than in college. That's the biggest thing is everybody is a great player. Everybody is fast. Everybody can catch you. Um, So there is a little bit of worry with him getting hit. Now, again, we've talked about this. A lot of running quarterbacks still get hurt in the pocket because when they're running, they're in more control of what they do. But overall, I just I would go with with and and interesting of the top quarterbacks. They're all actually big this year, save for Bryce Young. They're all 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", bigger guys, um, as opposed to, to, to Bryce Young. I just like what C.J. Stroud is doing. I know the thought on him is sometimes that moving out of the pocket, how can he do? He had a good game against Georgia doing that. I just like him overall. But I could split hairs. I mean, there's a, there's a mock draft of what do I think should happen and I think will happen. I, I would take C.J. Stroud. I think Carolina is going to take Bryce Young. Guys, let's make sure we clip it for uh, Bryce Young that Mike thinks C.J. Stroud is just a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Well, make sure. Well, make sure we Listen, you know what? That doesn't affect me. Do you really I think don't. I'm going to be bummed out about no. that if no. Bryce Young doesn't like me because of that? You no. heard him say, make sure you clip out. I said, I think he and C.J. Stroud are both right there. All I heard was Bryce Young. All I heard was Bryce Young sucks. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, and clip yeah. it that way, please. Say according the word sucks to, according quick, to you, like. yeah. Say, yeah, say sucks say if you sucks. can. Just say sucks. We'll lay out. Just real quick, just put it on just table. Just say sucks. Just say sucks. Nope, not doing it. <laughs> you know, the, greatest thing, the greatest thing is at some point, I'll see you guys individually, personally. Oh. And I will beat the out of you. <laughs> no, I travel in groups when I'm around you. <laughs> Have you ever seen Billy alone? Be honest, Mike. <laughs> not around Mike. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go ahead, Mikey. <laughs> uh, so if it's Bryce Young at one to Carolina, the draft starts at two. What are you making of all these reports, the whispers that have grown into loud screams that the Texans might not take a quarterback there. Even Todd McShay is saying now it's that bullshit. he believes it's very real that they could be taking uh, Will Anderson. I think it's very not real. Uh, I, I think, I think, uh, I think uh, th- this is also lying season. And, and listen to all the things all of a sudden people starting to say about, about Stroud, you know, on the internet, things you're starting to hear about him. This is the time all this happens. If you don't know and don't have a great breakdown and, and, and file on these guys by now, I don't know what the hell you're doing. So it, it, my draft board would be done. What, what am I finding out this week, or in quite honestly last week, unless I haven't met with these guys, that I shouldn't already know about these guys? So my draft board is done. To think that, that the Houston Texans wouldn't take a quarterback – what the hell are they going to do a quarterback? Somebody tell me, what are you doing a quarterback if you're not taking a quarterback? And you, you basically have to start over. This is a rebuilding program. And Davis Mills had his chance last year. And, and I just don't think grabbed a hold of it enough to be the guy. So this is a program that needs a lot of holes filled starting at the quarterback position. If Bryce Young goes one, C.J. Stroud is going two. And if C.J. Stroud goes one, Bryce Young is going too. The Houston Texans would be absolutely positively foolish not to take a quarterback unless their grades on all these quarterbacks just aren't very good. And then I'd say, okay, but I don't know how much I could buy into that. Well, it's funny you mention that because now there are reports the Titans are very interested in moving on from Ryan Tannehill and looking to move up in the draft to get one of those four quarterbacks. Well, I mean, that's what, listen, and I've always said this, it comes down to the grade. So what is your grade on the quarterbacks will tell you how high that you need to go up, okay? Um, I, I had to do like a mock top 10 draft, but I couldn't do any trades. If someone wants to jump up and get a quarterback, that's what's going to happen. But if you want to get a, a Bryce Young or a C.J. Stroud, you're going to have to jump up into the top three then, right? I mean, that, yes. that's what's going to have to happen. Um, so if that's where they're willing to go, if they have the assets to do that, then so be it. But that's where you need to go. I think in order of the way I would draft, and again, it's going to be Stroud, Young, Young, Stroud. And then to me, it's Anthony Richardson and then Will Levis. It's just a, a matter of who needs a quarterback. And if you need one, how far, like you go to Indy, you know, they need a quarterback, Seattle. They're not going to take a quarterback at five after either Geno Smith had. Detroit's not taking one at six. Vegas isn't taking one at seven. Atlanta probably won't. They're going with Desmond Ritter. Chicago isn't and Philly isn't. So there's room to move up in there if some of those teams, you know, want to move back. But if you want to get one of those, if you're grading and the top two are Stroud and Young, you got to jump up pretty high to get them then. Mikey, yeah, you know the Titans have the eighth pick. I mean, in theory, they could wait for, you know, Richardson or one of the – they took Malik Willis last year. They have the eighth pick this year. So that's going to be interesting. But as you said, if you want one of those four, because the Colts are lurking, obviously the Texans are up there. And I'm – the Seahawks could take one. I mean, no, they could just see the value. And, and Tennessee is at 11. They're yeah. at 11? Atlanta's Tennessee's at 11. Tennessee's okay. at 11. So okay. they're out of the top 10, but a lot of those teams don't need a quarterback, so they'd have to jump in there. And, and again, if you're great on Anthony Richardson or Will Levis is close to the other two, then you don't have to jump up as high probably to get them. So that's, what, that's the, the chance that teams take, is if I'm gunning to go up for a quarterback, how high do I have to go where I didn't go too high for him, but how low can I not go so I don't get up high enough to get him? I mean, that, right. that's what they're all trying to figure out. Mike, what do you make of uh, San Francisco and what they're trying to do here with Trey Lance? Listen, we, we, we see every year that there's bust at the number one pick. And, and I don't want to do that to Trey Lance because it's been injury, right? He sat for a bit and then got a chance and he got hurt. So we still have no idea, but you saw Brock Purdy step in and do enough to where, to where they say he deserves the shot to start. I, I Listen, if you're going to move Trey Lance – Expect to move him for not much. Just because you took him in the first round don't mean you're getting one back, not by any stretch of the imagination. 
He is a guy you traded up for, gave up assets for to go number three in the draft. And no matter the circumstance, whether bad this play, which it isn't the case here, or getting hurt, which is more the case here, we have no idea what he can do. And if I'm another team, I'm not giving up a first for that. I'm going to try and steal him as much as I can if I want him. If I want to make that move, man, I, I'm going to try and not – obviously, you do that in every trade. You try not to give up as much as you possibly can. But this is one of those where every now and then there's a GM and a coach or whoever is responsible for the draft that has to sit there and say, you know what, maybe we got this one wrong. Uh, Arizona, the most likely to trade, right? Because they're stuck with Kyler Murray. So that's going to be interesting. The, yeah. they would, and, and that, again, depends on what your grade on like a Will Anderson – a Tyree Wilson, if that's where you want to go, another really good edge rusher. How far back, if you want one of those guys, can you go to get that? To get to still, because that's the thing. You have a player in mind you want, you feel you can get him later than you pick. That's another thing. Your chance, how far back do I take the chance of going to where I can still get that guy? Uh, how far is Jalen Carter falling, you think? I, I don't think he falls back past Seattle. And I, 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 and that's why I, I love reading and laughing now. And I read out there, word is Seattle is souring on Jalen Carter, you know. And I don't believe, I don't believe a word anybody says at all. All I know, we're doing a mock draft, and I'm doing the NFC East. And if there is a chance that Jalen Carter f- fell to ten, I would take him in a heartbeat. I, I, I'm going to act like one of those coaches that said, I don't care about their issues. I can fix him. I can make him be that player because obviously we know the off-field issues. On-field, this guy is an absolute stud, though occasionally can he take a playoff here and there? Yes, but his talent is incredible. So I would, as Seattle, that, that's a need for them. Their defense was awful, absolutely awful last year. That is a guy that could eat up that interior line. We see what guys like Chris Jones and Aaron Donald can do, and I'm not putting them in that category, but I'm saying it used to only be, oh, get that edge rusher. Well, now if you can get a guy in the middle that can just wreak havoc, how much that can help your defense. So I see him. I still see him going to Seattle at five. The Texans thing confuses me, man. Like they had a, they had a generational quarterback in Deshaun Watson, never advanced past the second round to the playoffs. Like they think J.J. Watts the guy that's going to win them Super Bowls. What are they doing? Like Listen, they, they get rid of him. They get rid of uh, DeAndre Hopkins as well. Right. I mean, I I don't get what's going. Mike, on. Mike, they have to take a quarterback. I'm Hell, with you. Yes, absolutely. And again, they have a lot of holes to fill, but you're not going anywhere without a decent quarterback. So you gotta you gotta pick one now. Hopefully, you, listen. It's the two picks, so you're getting. If you're not getting the first one, you're getting your second one. And again, I think those two guys are so close uh, in abilities. I, I I don't see how they can't. I really do not. Uh, Mike, should the Jets draft just anyone named Mercedes Lewis? The Jets draft. Oh, jeez. No. Just anyone. Just is there a Mercedes Lewis out there that wants to play in the NFL? <laughs> oh, just, how quickly can I change my name? <laughs> And here's my theory. You ready for this? Yeah. Lamar Jackson to the Niners. How about that? By trade or by by this? Trey Lance goes to the Baltimore Ravens, and a bunch of future first-round picks go to the Baltimore Ravens. And, Billy, follow me down here because this is happening. Lamar Jackson goes to the San Francisco 49ers. How about that? Wow. Yeah. So what kind of deal do you think Lamar gets? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't thought about it that much. Just Don't thoughts. worry about that, yeah. <laughs> That's inconsequential, right? Yeah. Yep. Still say He'll Lamar, sign any deal. He's proven that. I still exactly. say Lamar will be back with Baltimore when the season starts. Okay. Uh, this is very exciting. All right. Promote again. Now, listen, we're going to play for Bryce Young, the sound of you uh, saying that C.J. Stroud is just slight, slightly better is what you said. Slight. Slightly better. Uh, therefore, you will not be participating because we already told Bryce and he doesn't want you around. All right. So well, that's okay. And when I say slightly better, I mean the thing that separates it is is the size to me a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. it's maybe, too late. Maybe, you know, yeah. Okay. All right. hmm. hey, anyway, uh, present it however you want. Hey, I have a question for you. Well, Mike. No, I'm going to end it with you promoting your draft show in a second, but Billy has a question first. What What's like the action uh, like a vacuum does? It pulls in dirt mm. Mm. through air, through air. How is Stu Gatz at interviewing? 
I think he's one of the best in the business. Okay, you're full of shit. Give me five words that come to the uh, to the top of your head when I say uh, words that rhyme with. Oh, truck, luck, muck, schmuck. Did I say truck? Yeah. Billy, schmuck might be enough where we can kind of just, you know. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Be quiet for a moment. Hold on. Be quiet for a moment. Suck. There you go. <laughs> wow. Nice. I would have gone with John Cruck. Do I would have said play. Duck, too. Crucky. You missed Duck, yeah. Do it's not one. play that for Bryce Young. I just <laughs> say you what happened there? All right, Mike, we love you. Uh, promote once again what you're doing Thursday night, DraftKings, big draft show with Mike and Mike. Yeah, big show. Uh, first round live during the first round. Uh, there'll be probably three different places between DraftKings and Vissen. Uh, to go for for different information and uh, myself and my son Mike and Charlotte Wilder and Emerson from DraftKings will be uh, in one of the studios breaking stuff down so uh, gonna be a lot of fun I I look forward to getting out there the great thing about the studios and DraftKings and the offices is they have coolers full of drinks which include beer so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say let me live out my experience when I was drafted in the 10th round at Notre Dame, I was hammered. So let me get hammered doing the show. So I'm going to try okay. to pull that off. Good. Uh, <laughs> if you need me, Billy, or Mikey, yeah, just let us know. We'll yeah. uh, we'll try not to be there for you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> no, we'll be there for you. Exciting Especially. time for you, man. Definitely is. Definitely is. Really, actually, really, really nice to meet you. I'm uh, I'm from the LA area, so I always grew up like hearing your voice on uh, on radio and stuff. Oh so. wow! Did you really? Yeah. Wow! wow. Yeah, I'm from That's... yeah, I'm from Pasadena. So all right. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's really nice to meet you. Uh, well, that that's a huge compliment. I'm flattered. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Yeah, for sure. What are you doing with body armor? Yeah, um, you know, I'm super, super excited to, you know, to kind of announce this partnership. Um, you know, um, obviously they, they have such a, you know, elite group of people, you know, and, and not just NFL, but all professions, um, professional athletes that they work with. And, you know, it's a huge art, uh, honor for me to be able to, you know, to partner with them. Um, you know, it's really, really big. Um, you know, hydration is something that's important for me as as an athlete, just trying to be myself day in and day out, getting me ready for whether it's a workout or a game. And, you know, body armor just being a, you know, being a drink, a uh, sports drink that, that's better for you is something that, you know, really helps. And, um, you know, just again, day in and day out, those little things add up and, and hydration is really big. So, um, you know, this is something that I'm super excited for. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to, to be a partner. So um, I'm, I'm super excited for the future. It's very cool, man. So we're, we're a couple of days away from the NFL draft, and, and I'm wondering, like, take us through the emotions. Like, what are, you, what are you feeling right now? What are you thinking right now? Your life's about to change, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's surreal. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. This was a, you know, it was a big focus on this pre-draft process of just, um, you know, trying to be the best version of myself, getting ready so that whenever my name is called, I mean, I can be the best version of myself and be able to give that to whatever franchise does take a chance on me and you know now with it being around the corner it's you know it's crazy to think about um you know just you know knowing how much you know my life's going to change and uh you know this next week but i'm super excited um you know it's what i've dreamed about my entire life and you know now that it's here it's definitely crazy um but but I, i i can't be more excited for it how much time do you give yourself to like enjoy it right because this is your dream is making it to the nfl but that's also just the start of your dream because then you obviously sure. want to excel in the NFL. Yeah, um, you know, for me, um, I think I do find joy in, in the process of getting myself ready. And, you know, wherever I, get in, wherever I get to, being able to learn the playbook and be able to, you know, to be able to start preparing and taking reps and, you know, talking to the coaches, all that stuff. So for me, I don't really feel like I have to take away or, or take a vacation or get away from it to, to enjoy it. Um, you know, it's going to be great to be able to celebrate that night with my, my family. And, um, you know, that's going to be super fun, you know, but after that, you know, it, it's, you know, now again, like you said, it, it's just starting the, the journey and, um, you know, I do find, find joy in that process. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm going to be able to enjoy it, you know, while, while being in it, because I definitely love the game and I'm excited for these next steps. You pick out the suit yet or what? I have, I have, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it is. It's. It's coming together. It's coming uh, together. So. What do you mean it's coming together? You get a sneak peek or or, or no? You, you, it's surprise on draft night. Uh, no, no. I mean, I 
I know what it is, but uh, but you <laughs> are know, you gonna I, tell me what it is? <laughs> we, when, when, when we uh, you know when we get done here, I'll, I'll tell you off air. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> oh, wow. and I won't Fair say enough. anything to anyone. I promise you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, have you thought at all about how you're going to attack, not attack, but like the hugging of the commissioner when your name gets called? How are you going to go about that? Like, what are you doing? Wow, that is a great question. I have <laughs> not thought about that at all. Right. That's the first. You know what? Maybe should I, I? I probably should go on YouTube and like check like yeah. how most people. That's right. a really good point. I would not have thought about that if you didn't bring that up. So. Oh. As of now, I didn't have a plan, but after we, we get done, I'm going to go and, and figure something out. All right, Billy, what do you think he should do? Like, what are you thinking here? Well, I think... Because he's got to stand out and be different, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think what ends up happening, Bryce, is because we've asked a lot of people this question, and what's going to happen to you is the emotions are going to take over, right? <laughs> so, like, whatever it is that you're thinking, you're just going to be so excited that when you get drafted, probably, that you're going to go, you'll hug him. I mean, we've seen guys hug him and pick him up and kind of swing him around. Here's the thing, though, that's interesting about that moment, too. Like, the same way that you're just going to be starting your dream... When you hug him or shake his hand or whatever, it's the last time you're going to like him for the rest of your career, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but you might as well hug him because you're never going to want to do it again. <laughs> I, I, I feel that. <laughs> That's good advice, though. <laughs> He's laughing. Mikey, yeah, you got something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have a preferred destination? You, you don't have to tell us. Oh, no. You could tell us. That's but a terrible Do you question. have yeah. one? No, nah, for, you know, for me, um, you know, I'm big in, you know, and controlling what I can control and, you know, where I get drafted and, and who takes a chance on to, on me, that, that that's not up to me. And, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm a believer and I feel like, you know, God puts me where I'm supposed to be. And, you know, I don't think it's my job to figure all that big, uh, big picture stuff out. Um, so, you know, for me, I, I really don't have a preference. Um, you know, I, whatever team it is, um, it will definitely get, get their all out of me. And I, I think, you know, I'll, I'll end up where I'm supposed to be. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm just blessed to be a part of it. You realize the team you end up on might not be as good as the team you played on in Alabama, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I understand, again, that there's going to be for me, honestly, you know, just the, the challenge of, of stepping up to that next level and, you know, being in college where, you know, I, w I was comfortable there and, you know, now taking that next step, that, that natural next step into the, the NFL. And I'm really excited for that challenge, to be honest, of, of being, you know, being able to play against the best, you know, people. Everyone dominated college. Everyone was, was a really good player or now is better than the really good players in college in the NFL. And, you know, to, to try to do everything I can to, to reestablish myself there and just work to, to grow and, and, you know, get, get comfortable in that league. I know that's going to be a huge challenge, so I'm really excited for that. Bryce Young is with us on behalf of Body Armor, and we'll get back to that in just a second. We had Jalen Hurts on the show before the season last year, and he told the stories as a freshman of Saban trying to throw him off the tube in the lake. <laughs> right, Sean, do you have similar stories? Did Saban try to do that to you? He he definitely did. Um, it wasn't my <laughs> freshman year. Um, my freshman team. year was... <laughs> No, my freshman year was uh, was COVID uh, when all that stuff happened. So I didn't get the I didn't get the freshman. You know, he normally takes every freshman class out. Right. Um, and, and, you know, he, he definitely does enjoy that. Um, but I got it my next year. Um, he took the, the leadership committee out uh, my sophomore year. Um, so it wasn't you know, there was nowhere to hide there. It was only well, I think it was only four of us. So there wasn't any hiding. Um, so I, I had to get on and I was determined. Um, you know, I, I thought I was going to be the one that, that, that finally overcame it, but, uh, nah, he, Coach Saban's a, a master with that, that stuff. He, he has Wait, but are you telling me Saban's undefeated, Bryce? Like no one, no one makes it like no one stays on the entire time. I personally have never heard a story and knowing my, like knowing the, like knowing my teammates, like they would have been bragging about it since I got there. So <laughs> it's, considering that I haven't heard it, um, I'm not sure if it's ever happened. I'm not saying it hasn't, but per I haven't heard it. Wow. So, um, yeah, but I was definitely another victim. Uh, Billy, your mind is blown. <laughs> I, I just can't believe this. <laughs> no, you'd be crazy. surprised though. Like you, if you hear him talk about it, cause most of the time I'm always on the boat. Like I didn't, I'm like, you know, I happened once I'm good. So I'm always on the boat and hearing him and he like, he has real strategy behind it. Like, I don't know all the, all the boating terms, but like he knows the terms and he's like, he'll be like, I've been next to him. He'd be like, okay. He thinks he's holding on like, Bryce, watch this. And then he goes flying. <laughs> So he, he's he's a pro at that. <laughs> what if his star quarterback gets hurt? <laughs> He'll just find another one. <laughs> That's a good point. It's got four of them on the roster. <laughs> 
Bryce Young is with us. Have you played in any of his pickup basketball games? Billy doesn't know about this. You know of the pickup basketball games, right? Where he stacks his team. Yes. Yeah. No, I have. I, I don't get I, the players okay. don't get an invite to that, or maybe I just maybe the players okay. that do. You know, they're they're keeping it keeping it quiet. But personally, I I haven't gotten the invite yet. So Bryce, we are. Uh, good friends with Mina Kimes, who we are interested in getting your perspective on this because oh, no. I think it was Super Bowl time. You met Mina. You took a picture. Uh, sh I believe she put out the picture, and then immediately everyone started questioning your draft stock because you guys seem to be similar <laughs> in height. <laughs> you hold a grudge. Should we no longer be friends with Mina because of this? <laughs> she's a dear no, friend, I, Bryce. Be honest. The no, guy. no, she's actually a, she, she's amazing. She, she's a, a, a friend to me, too. Um, and I re someone recently uh, told me that, and I was, I was like, you know, I didn't, I, I had seen it just because she had sent it to me, so I had seen it, and I was like, oh yeah, this is great, great to see you, and you know, I couldn't have thought any less of it. And then, um, yeah, someone had told me that 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 was like, a, you know, people were reading into it, uh, but you know, I yeah, I, I know, you know, I you know, I know Vita Kai, she she's amazing. Um, you know, amazing, you know, at her job, an amazing person as well. So um, yeah, I, I, I definitely don't, don't have any hard feelings, but it, it is funny how, how some things play out. Can, can we agree on this? Like, just between us, the, the scouting combine is dumb. I mean, it's stupid, right? I mean, it, it is. <laughs> your height, your hands. I mean, you, you can play quarterback, right? You're great at it. <laughs> uh, this, this is this is above my pay grade. I don't I don't, I don't have I don't have. Right, I said it. Bryce Young did not say it. The combine is stupid. Okay, it's dumb. It's 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 the only thing they should measure is your heart. Okay, that's oh, it. Oh Lord, <laughs> Billy, uh, Bryce. Here we go on the way out here, and we'll talk uh, about body armor uh, one more time before we get out of here. I am the GM with the number one pick in the draft. Sell me on why I should take Bryce Young with the number one pick. Yeah, um, you know, I'm 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 gonna give my my all, you know, from you know, when I hear my name called to, you know, um, just give my all to to the franchise and try to be the best version of myself for the team. Um, you know, I want to do whatever it is that the team needs of me, whatever it is that you know pushes the team to have the most success. And you know, I really pride my myself in that. And um, you know, I I believe in what I can do on the field. Um, you know, I believe in how I approach the game, and um, you know how I see things and prepare for things. And again, uh, you're going to get 110 percent out of me. Um, so you know, wh whatever team it, it is that that does take that chance, again, I'll be extremely grateful for it, and um, I'm I'm ready to get my all to. All right, man. Uh, we're rooting for you. Good luck. I know it's like dream come true type stuff. It is dream come true type Definitely. stuff. You get to share it with your friends and family, of course, as well. Uh, tell us one more time. This is super exciting. You're partnering with uh, Body Armor, so go ahead and tell us about it one more time, so our uh, our listeners can support you. Yeah. Um, again, I'm I'm super super proud, super excited to be announced this partnership with with Body Armor. Um, you know, this is a you know this is a sports drink that um, you know it, it is better for you, and um, really has allowed me throughout this journey to to you know just to just to fuel me day in and day out, whether it's for game day or, or for training. Um, you know, it, it allows me to. To, to be able to perform at my best and is a, a key element and I'm super blessed to, to be a part of the, the, the body armor family and, and for them to take me on and to have this partnership with them. Um, so it's, it's something I'm super excited about and, um, you know, it, it really does mean a lot to me. All right, man. Uh, good luck. Enjoy the night. I know it, you know, it's, it, it's tough in the moment, but make sure you just stop and, and kind of, Kind of enjoy it with your friends and family and take a moment to realize what the hell just happened to you, okay? <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, man. Good luck. Thank you. I really appreciate you. You got it, man. We appreciate you.